Good morning, and welcome to your notes on page 27, Area of Regular Polygons. So, uh, on the last page of notes, we talked about how to find the area of, like, you know, normal shapes, like trapezoids and squares and rectangles and triangles, right? But what happens if we let those shapes get bigger and bigger and bigger? So today's focus is if we have a regular polygon, again, that means all the sides are equal. So we already know how to do an equilateral triangle, but I'm going to show you another way today. We already know how to do an equilateral quadrilateral. That's a square. We did that yesterday. Again, I'm going to show you another way today that you could use. But what about when we get to like an equilateral pentagon or a regular pentagon with five equal sides? or a regular nonagon with nine sides, or a regular hundred gone with a hundred sides. Well, that's what today's going to help us figure out, is if I took one of those shapes, could I find the area of uh, one of those larger shapes? So, two important vocab words. Again, make sure that you write this down. I'd pause the video right here, copy it down, and then we can go on. Okay, welcome back. I'm glad you paused the video and did all that. So, um, we have two things that are super important. One is the apothem. Notice the apothem is the part that it's pointing at that's going straight down. It's that solid line. The apothem should always form a 90 degree angle with the side that's touching, and it should always connect back to the center. So, from the center to the side, making a 90 degree angle is the apothem. Meaning, in the picture I have there, that octagon, there's eight sides, so there's eight apothems that you could look at. Starting at the center and going to a vertice, the dotted line that's going upward, we would call that a radius. And again, you could connect that center to any of the, the eight vertices, so you have eight radii inside that octagon. And those are, again, that dotted line going to the, 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 the vertice. Those two things are important in helping us use the formula. The formula is one half times the apothem times the perimeter. Area equals one half AP. Notice that the little r is not included in there, and that's because the little r is not directly used in the formula. Little r, that radius though, is going to help us if we need to find a missing apothem or a missing side, because that piece right there would help us to make a little right triangle if you wanted to inside your uh, octagon. So if you want to make a right triangle inside that octagon, you could, and then you could you could find the missing parts there. So with that, let's jump over and look at our first example. So in my first example, I want to find the area of this regular polygon, which happens to be a triangle in this case. So what we know is that this is a regular polygon. I don't think I said that up front. But there we go. That tells me then that this is an equilateral triangle. That if this left side is 24.2, then this part's 24.2, and this part's 24.2. So I know all three sides. They also told me this little length right here is 7. So I gotta ask myself, is that the apothem or is that the radius? Remember, apothems go from the center to the side and make 90 degrees, and the center to the vertice is the radius. So in this case, because it goes to the side, I know that's the apothem. So I know that little a is 7, and I know the perimeter is equal to all three sides added together, which is pretty easy in this problem, right? Because all three sides are the same. We could just take 3 times 24.2. So ultimately what ends up happening is our area formula is going to be 7 times 3 times 24.2. You could have done that 24.2 times 3 first and then just multiplied those two numbers, but that's what's happening. And then we take that number and we're also multiplying it by 1 half because it's 1 half apothem times perimeter. So at the end, I'm going to divide it all by 2. That's what multiplying by 1 half is, is dividing by 2. You also could multiply by 0.5. You could put the fraction 1 half in your calculator and do 1 half times 7 times 3 times. However you want to do it, just make sure you get that half in there. If I put all that into my calculator, I would get, I have it written here, 254.1. And I didn't include any units there, so we'll just put units. And since it's area, it's got to be units squared, meaning that it's square units inside their little squares inside there. 20, 254 squares fit inside that triangle. That's it. That one's pretty easy. Um, just to kind of help you make a little sense of what we did there, because I want you to be mindful of what actually happened there. What happened 
Ooh, that's an ugly rendition of it, but we're going to pretend that's a good one. Uh, let's go with this blue. Ooh, I meant to go blue. Okay, so if we took the center, what we actually just did there is if I drew this radius and drew that radius and drew that radius, notice that it creates three triangles inside there. And even further, if I draw the apothem, the apothem, and the apothem, it creates six triangles that if this was drawn correctly, they would be six equilateral triangles. Remember the area of, an, of, of this triangle right here is base times height, right? This base times this height divided by two. Base times height, that's not base times height, that's base divided by height. Base times height divided by two. Try again, Mr. Knock. So I really just took this formula though, and I did it one, two, three, four, five, six times. So I end up with six base height divided by two. Well, since six divided by two is three, really I have three base times heights. The base here, well, it's not the entire 24.2, right? It's only going from here to here. So it's half of the 24.2, so it's 12.1. So I end up with three times 12.1 times the height, and the height is the apothem times seven. So you can see that if I just took this 24.2 right here and divided it by two, and then multiply by three and seven, I would get the same exact answer. So that's really what this formula is doing, is breaking the shape into smaller triangles and then multiplying all those smaller triangles. You better not come asking for breakfast right now, I'm recording. Oh, she's giving me the look, she's giving me the look. It's okay, I'm gonna tell her to wait. I can't tell her to wait, she can't hear me. Okay, she's gonna go outside. Here you go. <clears throat> okay. So, continuing this conversation, then let's look at example two. Now that you kind of have an idea of what we just did in that example, what really happened to this one should make a little bit of sense. You can see this says use trigonometry to find the area of this regular pentagon. I run into a little bit of a problem here because in this regular pentagon, they only gave me an apothem. The last one was really easy because I knew the side length, right? I took that side length and I could just multiply it by, in this case, five to get the, the perimeter. I don't know the perimeter here though, which is throwing me into a little bit of a problem, but it's not gonna really throw us off that much. Think about this shape right here. If I were to keep going and making my, my triangles that go around, doop, how many is gonna be there? Well, some of you may realize already you don't have to count that, but I'm going to right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten triangles. There were six triangles in a triangle, ten triangles in a pentagon, so how many would be in a hexagon? Twelve. How many would be in an octagon? Sixteen. Notice that the number of triangles is always twice as many as there are sides right, because there's two triangles per side. So what I can do is I could figure out specifically about this triangle that I drew in this picture originally, right? I'm making it a little bit bigger. Originally we said the apothem was 10. And if I wanted to solve this problem, then I would need to figure out how long this side is so I could find the perimeter. Well, if there's 10 triangles that go completely in a circle here, how many degrees do those 10 triangles have to make? You guessed it, 360, because they make a circle. So I can take 360, divide it by the 10 triangles that are in a pentagon, and I would figure out that every single pentagon has a 36 degree angle on it. Meaning, this angle right here has to be 36 degrees. Well, that makes some sense then. I hope it makes some sense. For those of you who might not have been so strong on the trigonometry, this is definitely where it's come back to bite you. Please make sure you go look that up and make sure you feel confident with it. If I have this side, what I know is that the side across from the 90 is my hypotenuse. The side across from the angle is the opposite. And the side next to the angle is the adjacent. Well, in this case, I'm going to cross out the hypotenuse because I don't know anything about it. I do know the opposite is x. The adjacent is 10. 
So which trig function uses opposite and adjacent? So, nope, that's opposite and hypotenuse. K, nope, that's adjacent and hypotenuse. Toa, ah, opposite and adjacent. That's my tangent function. So I'm going to do the tangent of theta, that's the t, is equal to the opposite, that's the o, over the adjacent, that's the a. Plug in what I know. Theta is 36 degrees in this problem, so I have tangent of 36 is equal to the opposite x over the adjacent 10. And then if I'm going to solve this, I'm going to multiply both sides by 10, so that cancels out. And I get 10 times the tangent of 36, which gives you approximately 7.27 when you put that in a calculator. So with that, I'm, I'm in a good spot to solve now. I now know that this part right here, this x, is 7.27. Be mindful of that, though. Remember that 7.27 now just represents this piece right here. I chose a dark color, but you can see it. It's that little piece right there on the triangle, meaning that the entire length of that side is actually twice as big as 7.27. So you'd end up getting like 14.54, uh, right? But ultimately, I know there's 10 triangles. So what I did is I took that 7.27 and I multiplied it by 10. 7.27 times 10. What I can tell you is I didn't take the number out of my calculator because I rounded this number. I left the number in my calculator. So if you didn't take it out of your calculator without rounding this, you'd actually get 72.65 when you multiply by 10. You should do that. Don't, don't round it like I did on here. Leave it in your calculator and multiply it by 10. So I now know the perimeter is equal to the 72.65. The apothem had been given to me. The apothem was 10. And now I can go, area is equal to one-half the apothem times the 72.65 for the perimeter. And I get that the area is equal to 363.27. And again, since I didn't put units, we'll put units squared. You did it. Hooray, hooray. Okay, one last example for our notes, and then I'll put up the notes so you can copy them down. Uh, this one, the, the picture in my notes is super ugly, so I, I'm redoing it. Okay, so it was a hexagon. <laughs> Still super ugly. I tried. Okay, so in this one, what happens is we know that the... Uh, outside, the entire length of the outside is 22 units, right? And they asked me to find the exact, ooh, ooh, that's an important word, the exact area. Huh, I wonder why they said that. Hmm. Okay, let's be mindful of that. Um, so what I need to do is I got to think about that little triangle that's inside there so that we can focus on just that part in order to get this going in the right direction. So taking that little triangle out, if I'm going to do this, I already know the outside, so I can easily find the perimeter. The perimeter is going to be that 22 six times, right? Because there's one, two, three, four, five, six as a hexagon. So we just take 22 and multiply by six. And that would give me the perimeter already off the bat. So I know the perimeter is going to be 132. Done. So I'm good on that. Well, if this triangle is just picking up this half right here, remember that it's not going to be 22 across the base of the triangle. 22 is the entire length of the hexagon. So that just means the triangle is going to have a base of 11. And if I'm going to solve this problem, I need to figure out what the apothem is so that I can do 1 half the apothem times this perimeter that we now know is this 132. So again, we got to figure out what angle would go up here in the top of the triangle. Well, think about your hexagon. It's got six sides, meaning there's 12 triangles inside of it. So I'm going to take that 360 and divide it by 12. And if I do that, I get 30. So I know that this is going to be a 30. Well, if you just keep going at this point, you'd say, okay, well, great. This is my opposite. This is my adjacent. I'm going to use tangent again. Da -da 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 -da. You'll see in my examples that I accidentally did that. And then I crossed it out because it doesn't want you to use any calculator for this. If it says you find the exact answer, they're telling you to do it without a calculator, essentially. Um, so I don't want to use a calculator. What I want to recognize is that if this angle is 30, then this angle must be 60. Nope, don't do that. Don't do that. 
this angle must be 60, meaning that's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, which means we know the side across from the 30 is the smallest side. The hypotenuse is always twice the size of whatever this side is, so I know the hypotenuse here would be 22. And the apothem, since that's the side around the 90, is going to be square root of 3 times bigger, so this should be 11 square roots of 3. Look, I have my apothem already. As long as you know your 36 and 90 triangles, these are easy. So I now perimeter is 132. The apothem is 11 radical 3. I know I didn't use a capital A in the last problem. That was a mistake. I should have used a, a or I did use a capital A. I should have used a lowercase a. Area equals 1 half apothem times perimeter. So 1 half times 132. I did that backwards times 11 radical 3. That's okay, it'll probably be easier to see that way. We're going to multiply the 1 half to the 132. I think we'll get 65, 66, multiply that by 11. And when I multiply that 11, I get 7, 26. And we just attach the radical 3 at the end since there's nothing to multiply the radical 3 to. And again, we'll put units squared for area. And that's it. Now you have the exact answer. So don't copy down my mistake. Make sure you copy down the exact version. Don't copy down what I crossed out unless you want to write it and cross out and be like, don't do this. Um, but that's it. That should be pretty straightforward. There is one example I didn't show you. I didn't show you an example if I were to give you a um, a radius. So let's look real quick what would happen if I did that. So if I told you that this was 10, and asked you to find the area, this one would be really a lot tougher um, because we'd have to take that right triangle. We would have to find this angle, which in the case of a square, we're taking 360, dividing it by 8, and you would get 45, right? And then we would have to use this to find the apothem and the side. Once we have the apothem, we'd have the first half of the equation and then find the side so we could do the second half of the equation. Uh, this is nice because it's 45, 45, 90, but if it wasn't 45, 45, essentially what's going to happen is you're going to have to use a sine equation. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse to find the side, and then you have to use a cosine equation to find the apothem over the hypotenuse to do the uh, apothem. So you have to do sine and cosine to get both numbers, then solve the problem using one half apothem times the uh, apothem times the perimeter. Okay, so hopefully that helps you out. Let me know if you have any questions, uh, and I will see you in the next video.